All right. Welcome to the Closers Corner podcast. I am your host, Greg Simpson, as always. Uh, it's good to be back after a few weeks off. Uh, we had a couple of events happen. Um, <laughs> uh, we had uh, a, a group of us from out fast here. Uh, we all went down to the Tony Robbins Unleash the Power Within. Um, so we weren't able to do our live or recorded podcast that week. Uh, the following week, uh, or I should say at, either at the event or somewhere, either at the hotel or somewhere else, I caught COVID. Uh, so I wasn't able to do my scheduled live and recorded event or uh, podcast uh, the following Friday or that Friday after the Tony Robbins event. Um, so I was down for the count. And then we had Thanksgiving, uh, which <laughs> was uh, interesting to say the least, like still can't smell. Uh, I can taste finally, but having Thanksgiving and not being able to taste kind of sucked uh, very much. Um, and uh, then, so I couldn't, I didn't want to be doing it because I was still testing positive for COVID uh, that Friday. So no podcast for three weeks in a row. I feel like I've missed you guys. Uh, I've got a couple of really good questions in the meantime from them, from people who have reached out. So I'm going to answer those questions today. Um, but first and foremost, I'm going to talk a little bit about some other news. And I hate to be beating a dead horse with Zillow, but they're back in the news this week. Uh, I'm going to talk about some other things, and I'm going to introduce a new segment near the end of today's podcast, so stay to the end for the new segment uh, that I'm launching every single week. Uh, I think you guys are going to like it. Um, so, Zillow's back in the news this week uh, with more bad news uh, for people who were planning on working with Zillow in their brokerage and their iBuyer program. And they, uh, when they announced a f about a month or so ago big stink was that they were pulling out of the iBuyer program. They were no longer going to be buying houses, fixing them up, and trying to resell them for a profit. Um, and so they have pretty much got destroyed on that by, uh, by me and about a million other people and about 10 million realtors or 30 million. What, how many people do we have in America, Caitlin, 330 million or something like that? So that means we probably have about 35, 40 million realtors in this country, <laughs> probably something like that. Anyway, um, and so they promised that they were going to honor the contracts that they were in during that process. They weren't going to back out of anything. They were going to stay true to their word. And like most major corporations, they're bullshitters, and they're full of crap. And um, the, they have pulled out of now 400 contracts of those deals because they were probably either going to lose more money or now they think they can sell it for more money. Or whatever, so they have agreed to pay some monetary uh, <clears throat> payment to uh, people in those 400 people or 400 families that now have been affected and we're planning on buying a house probably this month or next, and now they're just shit out of luck. So thanks a lot for that, Zillow. You suck as always. Um, what, I'm just so tired of these guys, um, and it's just it's ridiculous. Um, so that was pretty big news this week. That That's not really cool. Um, not a big fan of them, as you have heard, uh, but that's, um, that's definitely one thing I wanted to bring to most of y'all's attention today. Um, I'm going to be bringing up this really quick here so I can talk, start talking about some of the questions. Again, I don't want this podcast going super long um, every Friday morning, but again, we are back. Um, so the first question I got asked um, about a week or so ago uh, was, when starting to invest in a rental portfolio without paying cash for it, any advice on how to finance? Uh, yes, the, we get a lot of lending questions here now that we have a private money lending company, uh, Deployed Capital Group. And so we do have multiple different products for buying a rental portfolio, uh, starting, an inventor, uh, starting a rental portfolio here. Um, and some of those products are for single family homes and some are for multifamily. And we have both bridge loans uh, which I'll explain what those are in a second if you don't know what that is. And we also have the actual portfolio loans, I should say the refinanced long-term 30-year traditional mortgages that are out there for rental properties. So why would you want to go through a private money lender like Deployed Capital Group with, versus going to the bank? I'll, I'll, I'll kind of dive on that, and then we'll dive into how that actually works on that side. So um, 
going to a bank to get a port, a rental loan is not a problem. You can do that. You can go to your traditional mortgage companies as well. Uh, like our good buddy Rob DeJory over at Guild Mortgage, they have the traditional mortgage products. Um, and that's there's nothing wrong with that except for the fact that you are going to be putting those properties in your personal name. I am not a big fan of doing that. That's just my personal belief that you should not be putting your rental properties in your personal name. But to get a loan from a Guild Mortgage or a Wells Fargo Chase Bank or any other mortgage company out there like Louis Travieso over at Mortgage Plus, um, or Chris Rademacher, she's another one of our favorites over at Lincoln Lending. Um, the thing is, is that you are putting that in your personal name, so you are opening yourself up to massive liability issues, which I don't have time to go through in this podcast. But by going through a private money lender like Deployed Capital Group, what you're getting uh, is you're able to put it in your LLC or your corporation, if you will. I, I wouldn't do it in a corporation, but I'm not a CPA, and I'm not giving you tax advice. Um, you would, I would put it in your LLC so you could have some sort of protections. I would name that LLC the name of the, the property, and we will fund you in your LLC's name and let you close in it so you don't have to do any switcheroos or anything that might cause a due on sale clause um, in the deal. If you have a question on any of what I'm talking about, please ask it in the question and I, or, the, or the chat, and I will answer it the best of my ability. Okay, so you still are personally guaranteeing that loan through deployed capital on a private money loan. Um, so your name, you are still signing it, but the other benefit of doing that uh, or pro of that versus the con of going through a traditional mortgage company um, is that you, while you are still personally guaranteeing it, you are not going to, because it's going in your LLC and not in your personal name, it is not going to show up on your debt to income ratio. So it doesn't count on towards your debt as an individual on your credit report. So you can buy essentially if you have the down payment um, and the cash flow reserves as many properties as you want. Um, you're not limited towards like FHA regulations. I think you can do up to 10 in your personal name. I could be wrong on that. I'm not a mortgage lender. I'm not a loan officer. I don't know that exactly. Maybe one of those uh, mortgage professionals I mentioned will jump on it and, and uh, answer that question there that I even have. Um, <clears throat> but that's how you can get started uh, with a rental portfolio is going through a, if you don't want to put in your personal name, a private money lender like Deployed Capital Group, uh, we have many relationships with lenders that work with us to get you financed. And it's, uh, if you need a, what's, like I said, I'm going to talk about a bridge loan versus the actual 30 year program. So to get the best deal on the planet, obviously you need to be looking at doing value add properties. This is what's known as the Burr method. You buy it, uh, with a bridge loan, a, a traditional private money loan, um, you're going to renovate it. Um, so you're going to have get renovation costs to do that. Um, you're going to um, buy it, renovate it, um, refinance it, right? Am I missing one? I think I'm missing one already. Uh, renovate. Help me out, y'all. Rent and then refinance. Rent, thank you. Boom. You're going to rent it out to your tenants. Then you're going to refinance it, and then you're going to repeat the process. So the bridge loan is basically a traditional loan that's going to be your fix and flip style loans. And instead of, instead of flipping it to another end buyer, you're basically flipping it back to yourself and refinancing it long term in a 30 year program instead of having a 7.99% interest rate up to 12%, actually up to 14% if your credit's not so great on a bridge loan, which is again, a short term, six month to 12 month loan, then you're gonna refinance it into a roughly a 4.25 all the way up to about a six and a half, depending again on your credit score, you're going to be able to refinance it into a long term 30 year plan. And then you can start that process all over again, cause you're gonna be pulling out that 20% that you put down on the bridge loan to then go buy another rental property. That's how you guys get super ultra wealthy is doing the Burr method. And if you do it very, via deployed capital group, via a bridge loan into a refinance, you can literally buy unlimited amount of properties once you get that initial 20% down. Okay, next question is, what is something you want to accomplish before 2022 hits? That is a great question, Joe. I got about a billion things going on right now uh, with launching our new capital company. Honestly, before 2022 
hits, I'd like to have all of our ducks in a row with our corporate formation attorney to make sure everything is done with that, with our stock option certificates are ready to roll, um, our referral uh, program is ready to roll with our new launch of the brokerage, have everything launch ready with our franchise uh, attorneys and uh, consultants to have the franchise documents ready to roll. We have a few people who are interested in buying franchises in January when we launch that. So that's a pretty big announcement coming here soon on when that actually will launch. Um, but it will be in January of 2022. Uh, we also have to get uh, the SEC uh, documents prepared by our attorneys, uh, our SEC attorneys, and getting that all light up. So we've got that submitted to them. I think today we've submitted that to them. Uh, working on the technology guys, getting them everything that they need. Uh, they've got everything that they need uh, at this point from us to get things rolling there. Um, so yeah, we've got some really cool technology stuff that we're going to be rolling out to you guys later um, in early next year. So that's really exciting. So we're just basically trying to get our ducks in a row. Um, to make sure that everything is submitted and filed on January, whatever the first Monday of January is. I think it's the second or the third this year. Um, so that we can get our audited financials together. Uh, it's, it's quite a process to get this whole thing done. So that's long, long story long, uh, trying to get all that stuff in a row for, so we can blow the doors off in 2022. Okay. So I'm going to take a quick sip of coffee. Any questions that come, come through so far? I don't see anything here. So one other question I got actually from one of my agents this morning, and I'll answer it here again for him, is from Connor, was asking about a deal that he was looking at um, from a wholesaler on uh, Facebook who has actually a pretty good deal numbers-wise. And what does it mean when you have clouded title? Um, and so that means, you know, when we're buying properties, whether it's retail or it's a, an investment property, we are always wanting to buy properties with clear title, which means there's no encumbrances, there's no liens, there's no back taxes or anything that would what's called clouding title. If you have a cloud on your title, which means it's not clear, there's something on the title that is preventing you from getting free and marketable title, which means that you can not have any issues with getting title insurance on that property to make sure that there's no, no one can come back to you and say, you owe me money or you owe uh, the government money or anything like that. So um, if there is clouded title, there are several ways to have to get that done. But that just means you're, if you buy that property with the title being clouded, you're not going to be able to um, resell that property typically without getting clear title to a retail end buyer. So if we bought that, that townhouse today we would still have to get title clear to be able to go back and sell it to somebody else for the ARV price of the 200, 210 price because a traditional lender on the back end is not going to finance that deal unless it has clear and marketable title. Um, so those are the main questions I wanted to answer today for you guys. If you have any more questions about those things, you are more than welcome to uh, ask me uh, an email closers corner at outfastrealty.com and I will answer them uh, in more depth next week. Uh, oh, one more question I did get that I did answer for her already, but um, it, I already kind of answered it. I already said it. She asked me when our franchising is launching and that is, in, like I said, in January of next year. So that one was for you, Heather. Um, so, all right, let me uh, close this out. I don't know if this is going to work or not, but I hope it does. Um, the new segment I want to uh, bring to you guys this week is the clown of the week segment. And so this week I'm bringing to you this new segment because I'm so sick and tired of these clowns out there making a stink and making real estate look like a bunch of idiots. And so this week's clown of the week goes to the CEO of better. I am really upset with this. This is bullshit in my opinion. Again, they just raised $750 million through a SPAC ladies and gentlemen. And they just laid off, I've seen anywhere between 9 and 15% of their entire workforce. Go fuck yourself, better. That is unbelievable that you're going to raise all this money. And then you're going to 
pump your stock price up, you're gonna do all this, and then you're gonna lay off your entire workforce. And the way he did it over a mass Zoom call, that's why you get the clown award this week. You didn't have the guts to tell him any other way than a, in a massive Zoom call. Shame on you, sir. That is not the kind of leadership we need in this industry. How dare you do that to your employees? Unbelievable. I just, you win the clown award this week. Unbelievable. I'm just so pissed off. I couldn't believe that when I saw that. Um, got the, ugh, I just, yeah, mad about it. So, screw you. All right. Thanks for joining this week's live edition of the Closers Corner Podcast. Hope you got some good value out of today and you have some humor as well. Uh, and back. Hey.